Welcome to a new teardown video. I think this is also going to be a repair attempt video. This is a really, really big and nice HP product. 4194A. It will measure components, impedances, uh, values. It will uh, make curves and everything. And if you see here on my with my hand, how big it is. It is huge. It was designed in 1986. The, and I think it was discontinued in 2003. Uh, I, I found a, a release note of a new firmware in 2003 and then it was discontinued. And uh, the top unit is uh, 24.5 kilos, 12.7 uh, kilos uh, for the bottom part and about one kilo for, for the um, test fixture part. So all in all, uh, 38 kilograms. So it's really good. You can uh, easily take it apart in the middle and carry the two halves uh, separately. So you're not going to break your back. But this one has the classical error. You will see in a second. I've been playing around with this uh, for the last few days. And it says memory test in progress, la 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 la. And then in a second it's... Okay, now the error is not here. Fantastic. So it says something about the software is from 87. And uh, so there is uh, this uh, bridge error. Oh, see here it says bridge unbalanced. So I really can't do anything with this. And there's also this annoying beeping sound and it's just not reacting to anything at all. So I think somebody input it. See, if I short it. I don't want to hear this single. So now we'll shut up. So I've been searching on the internet for this uh, error and uh, someone said uh, something about an A4 module. There was a fuse they replaced, but there is no A4 module. I took off the, the top metal and it says uh, all the different A numbers for the different PCBs. There is no such thing as an A4. I also looked in the bottom unit, still can't find any A4 units. It is packed with electronics. All those PCBs, they go all the way to the bottom here. They're quite big and deep. And it is using two 68,000 CPUs. You can see one here and there is another one. I think it's, yes it is, down here on that module. I don't know if it's that easy to see. And this is the memory or the programs and you got it's it's packed we're gonna go through all the different uh, boards and we're gonna see what we can come up with here we got the power supplies and the CRT screen section The bottom side shows how it can be uh, easily taken uh, apart into two units. This will of course be all the RF uh, stuff. This is all the IO and this is the power supply cable between the two units. This is the top plate mounted. I didn't put in the screws. This is just to show you guys how nice this is really done. And here we can see the different names or the different numbers for the PCBs. A3, but where's A4? And there we go. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Right. So this is what the top unit consists of. 
So I had the idea, okay, maybe A4 is on the bottom unit because people don't reveal all important information when they come with how they did this and how they did that. You need to guess the rest. It is really, really beautifully made. And this is the front uh, panel. Buttons, uh, scanning and encoders and all that goes through this uh, flat cable. One thing I find a little bit funny, this is the D-Gauss coil for the CRT, but it's over the metal, not under the metal. That is a little bit funny, isn't it? Isn't that supposed to go around the CRT? <laughs> Maybe there wasn't space up here. Or I don't know, that's a little bit funny. But it seems to be working. This screen is beautiful. I've been trying the two different um, systems here and it's more or less the same uh, problem. So I can, I can try, at the moment I'm using the impedance uh, part of it, see? And I get the bridge unbalanced error. So this is how it should be if, uh, if nothing is connected those two will be connected together, right? This is an open, uh, if you if you think about it, when this one is mounted, right? So that means, I think the problem is on the L and not the H. There is a response. I do see something when I poke around with the BNC cables. So that means it is actually reacting to input here. If you go into uh, function, and go to uh, gain face, it goes to this part. And here I don't really see a lot of stuff going on. You need to, of course, use the attenuation. If you uh, mount the different uh, channels to the signal sources, and then you'll, of course, see some reactions as well. So I think actually the, the problem can be many places. It can also be in the bottom unit. It can also be in the top unit. So I'm a little bit lost at the moment. This is the top side of the measuring unit. That is the bottom part of this analyzer. I have taken off all the metal shields. Let's look a little bit closer here. So this is the digital interface. And this is the power supply. And as you see here, power supply, digital interface. And all those chips they do um, distribute uh, digital interfaces to all the other parts via those cables and such. And there's also a cable underneath that goes to the other side of this unit. There are two sides more or less like this. So it's full of filters, mixers, amplifiers, and all that kind of stuff. And they're using some really nice op amp setups. See, this is a low leakage kind of system. And this goes to the input for impedance, right? And this is the the other set of inputs output for gain phase. And if we look a little bit closer, this PCB also got digital interface section that controls everything. Relays for attenuation, filtering, and all that. So this is clearly an output amplifier to drive the test port and on this system you also see 
power amplification, relays for all sorts of uh, ranges, attenuation, uh, and such. And look at that. Very, very high impedance uh, solutions. That will be a very nice op amp. And here we got signal generation using some uh, mixers and filters and amplifiers and all that. So they can do this uh, wide band sweep. They are often beating together um, two different uh, VCOs and through mixers to generate a, a wide band uh, sweep. This is a normal way to do it. And everything here is just beautifully made. Look at that filter section. So if we take one of the shells, look, they are treated with some flexible contacts. And so this one contacts the um, open metal like this, and it will create perfect shields for the different uh, circuits. So there's no crosstalk and everything. Unfortunately, I've been through this board and what did I find of bad things? I did clean up a little bit here so it's not so visible anymore. But around all the marked capacitors here, you'll see I put a little permanent marker on all those caps. All those caps, they have leaked, they have puked out the, um, the liquids inside the capacitor. You can still see this one. I did not clean up that super good. So if you take a cotton pot and clean up, you can see it is still sticky and gross. And when you clean this up, take your own meter and measure. Now the cotton pot is conductive. So you need to take out all those capacitors, replace them with new, and do a super clean for, for leakage on all the boards before you're gonna get this one working again. Because of course you got super, super ultra high impedance uh, circuits with ultra high gain and super, all, all things that comes with super, right? And then leaky capacitors all the way around with their um, liquids that is uh, conductive and it's just destroying everything. So it will take quite a lot of hours to get this up and running again. I am sorry. Look at that. Some of those capacitors. I don't know if it's easy to see on this... Uh, video but what you need to look for is this wet stuff around the capacitors and what you do is you take a cotton bud like this and just wipe a little bit like this around the capacitors so the idea is you can have a look at this now we're going to test with an ohmmeter if this is conductive. And if it is, you know it's a leaky capacitor. And it just goes on and on with this type, or this size of capacitor. They have leaked. See? We got the capacitor snot. And now it starts to corrode the nearby parts. This is highly conductive, this capacitor puke. And it is in a really weird color. And yes, if I put this to my own meter, yeah, I'll be able to measure it. can see the corrosion here. And this circuit is a very, very special high impedance. You can see it by the way that it's made around here. 
how I'm mounting the shells again. See how they added springy contacts around input and output connectors for best shielding. Really, really nice design. Every little detail you see here comes from somebody figuring out this was needed. Look at this little springy contact that connects in between those two mixers. And it's just fantastic. Well designed all over. Click. And those labels, VCO local amp, and another local amp. Filter and preamp. Really, really nice with all the texts. And this was indeed the power amplifier and they added nice extra cooling holes and all the text for adjustments. Oh, what did I do here? See, this is not working. Oh, there is a hole here. Needs to be right. <laughs> so this is the top side of the measuring unit with all the shells mounted. I didn't put in all the screws because I expect I will be playing a little bit more with this. And here is the bottom side of the measuring unit. And this is the flat cable I was talking about from the digital input section. And again, of course, we see a lot of digital expansion. And again, digital that goes to the other part of all the analog. Again, digital expansion for I.O. expansion of all stuff. I think this is some DC filtering. This looks a little bit funny. We got some power drivers. Or maybe this is power supplying. It looks a little bit special. We got some really sexy thick film modules. Again, this is around the impedance port. So that will be two of those ports that goes to this section and the other two goes to the other side. Look at the thick film sections. Let me see if I can get some more light in here. And I believe those run a little bit hot because why would they do this? Or maybe this is for uh, thermal so they like to keep them cold or at least at a constant temperature for better performance at least we've got two identical circuits here got some really nice and expensive op amps and the This is the gain phase part. Also, we got some of the ports. I think this is the test channel. Yes, and the reference channel that goes in here. So test channel and reference channel. And look at that. You got to see this. They went all this way to make those two PCB layouts mirrored isn't that just beautiful <laughs> I am a little bit impressed so this is to make them as identical as you can possibly do so everything is just a mirrored copy it's crazy but they they just go all the way sometimes. So cable length and cable signal length here is just insanely critical. And then it goes here. <laughs> I love it. This is a little bit worrying. It looks like somebody dropped 
something really really heavy onto this mixer this can't be right hmm it feels really really bad so here's a little trick that I did when I was disassembling all those shells I took off all the shells I marked a little mark here so that all the different shells I also added a little mark so that goes that way and all the other shells for the other side I didn't mark so now I know all this big pile of shells they go here so now it should be fairly easy to see this one doesn't go here because there's no no yes it does because there is a hole so this is the only way it can be right you can't it's not going here because there should be a hole for, for trimming so this goes here so now it's super easy to assemble this again and i don't need to pay, play a big game of tetris so yeah this is what we got in this unit what do you think that component is? So it's filled with as a glass thing. I think it's a reed relay. A very special one. So I think that the coil wires must probably go through. Because if you try and take this and try and move it a little bit, it's impossible. So that is some sort of a sexy relay, right? And again, I marked all the capacitors where I found uh, leaked liquids. And you'll see in the circuit here, it is made for super high impedance signals. And then you got guard ray rings and all that. And then you got a delete capacitor that's puked all over this place. Of course it's not working. But it's beautiful designed. And you'll see. Yeah, this is the sense amp here. There's a little wall built into the case. Oh, there's a test point down here. You can access. That one is the test point. So I'm definitely going to go through this and put my scope on here and see if I can find anything cool or find anything different between the two different amps when I connect the signals to one of the sources so what is going on and what is missing maybe i will be able to find something bad i just really like to see those super nice details with the cutouts <laughs> oh, it's just fantastic really like the text amplifier range resistors and amplifier output test point so I should be able to to check a lot of stuff just by the assumption of signal path Let's see if there's something and again here this is the test channel also say what the different things were doing. Oh yeah, I also find a lot of voltages labeled quite easily. And I did check all voltages, they're all perfectly fine. This is how the bottom side looks like when it is all assembled with all the metal 
shield shells. Really nice and beautiful. This is the input test adapter, terminal adapter with completely melted rubber feet. Ugh, this is so bad. I really need to clean this because if you touch this stuff, it is the most sticky, most gross absolutely shit banana but what that what the heck is the secret about this those rubber feet i've seen this quite a lot of time it happens so something touched this or was it uv or why is it not on the back side right and the other one is all the way around oh now i got it on my fingers damn it yeah this is real bad see uh, sticky so it is now cleaned up using alcohol and it's, it is really easy so now the test fixture is cleaned up I used alcohol and it really takes it easy easy it was all the way in here and super slimy everywhere and now let's have a look at this test fixture and it is really nicely made and of course it is extra shielded and then it goes all the way up like that I'm a little bit curious why the two Connections they goes like this. I would have expected them to go in one point and then back to the other one, not like that. But of course, this is not gigahertz stuff. There is one of the golden bananas here missing. I'm a little bit sad about that. I think there is some sort of an industrial standard for the spacing for four terminal products. Because see, I could just take my SMD fixture for something else and just plug it straight into this one. Even they kind of stole or copied the idea a little bit when you say that is a little bit like the same idea